Hold on there, player. I got something important to tell you. If any of you guys who are watching want to watch all this back, I currently have a thing going on called Full Studio. Access eight bucks per month for the entire catalog of all these Twitch streams. It goes back to 2021, all the way up until right now. As well, the Access Plus option that gives you access to the catalog, the consultations, and a 30% discount code to anything I drop in the future for my sound packs right here. So if you're watching this, cop the full access, please, please. I'm gonna walk away now. For more information, cop something from my store, wait for the email, and join the Discord for more. Now back to the video. I produced a record for, for Buddy. And the name of the record for Buddy is called Like This. And it's funny because, you know, I look at the video and I'm going to show y'all what the video looks like. Shout out to Buddy for the, for the one time. He, I produced this record for him. It's sitting at half a million views right now. Six days ago. Um, sitting at half a mil. Yeah. I was supposed this to be a part of this music video, by the way. Nigga, watch. Like, this never had no shit like this. I hop inside my whip. And then I flip my switch. Every time I smoke my spliff. Think of all kind of shit. Turn the mic up right quick. Yeah, no, so my shit. Never heard no shit like this. Never heard no shit like <coughs> this. Nigga, this shit gon' hit. Shout out hey, to Randy's donut. Yep. Every day y'all wake, I give thanks. Ever since a little kid, all these problems up in the way. But I can't be shined away. Close your eyes and open your mind. Might be surprised by what you find. Chevrolet crawling my top down west side and low it does hit. Yeah. I kind of providing the sound for you to so, move while you cruise. Take your shoes off. I'm going to tell y'all a little story. Cool off, kick back by the pool. Cut the news off. I put that I'm going to tell y'all a little story, bro. I'm going to turn this off. So... Let me tell y'all a little story. So this record was was something that I didn't think was ever going to happen. I didn't know I was going to be able to come across him at some point because, you know, I, the first time I learned about Buddy, he ended up collaborating with a homie of mine, K Trinata. Shout out to K Trinata. And um, what was so crazy was the fact that uh, my management team uh, back in 2021 was like you should book you should book like like book a month in LA and just do sessions and so I learned after a while I learned after a while that sessions in LA it, it is a pretty intense thing and I'll tell you exactly why so there's two parts to the story. I was also working on the Funk Will Prevail at that exact same time. I went out to LA and I made a slew of records. I got a chance to do sessions with Mick Jenkins. I got a chance to do uh, a session with Masego. I got a chance to meet Trinidad James. It was crazy. It was the craziest month I had ever had, right? And I think I ended up uploading some photos during that time. Um, but I was hanging with a buddy of mine in L.A. for like a month. And, uh, you know, the whole point was to basically do sessions. And so uh, one of the sessions I had was um, one of them that I had was Buddy. But before Buddy, I had this session with the artist by the name of Fauna Hughes. And if you guys don't know who Fauna Hughes is, um, she, well, for me on my radar, she first popped up because she was on the, at the time, Tyler, the creator dropped his album, call me if you get lost. And she was on the record. She was on the album. And, um, uh, it was crazy to see that like, oh shoot, like final one do a record. Like this is great. This is fun. And so peep this, this is going to be a crazy thing. So the same day, the same day, I think I ended up having a session booked with Fauna Hughes and I get to the studio room. I, we were probably somewhere up in like North Hollywood and uh, we were up there. Uh, it was me, an engineer, Fauna. Um, and, you know, we I was just trying to figure out like where she was like creatively 
And I always find that whenever I meet artists for the first time, it it, it sometimes is a hit or a miss. <laughs> Hilariously enough, hit or miss. But um, with with Hoyon, what's good, my G? Um, but I realize whenever I meet artists for the first time, and I've never like met them beforehand, and it's just like a a book session, do do a record with someone you don't know. It sometimes could be a hit or a miss. You might you might connect, you might might link, you might it might work. And then there's other times that it it might just be like, oh, you know, it was great to like connect with you, da da da. da but it's not necessarily something that I was looking for. So I remember I get to the room. I'm super hyped to just be in a room with her. And she's super chill, like, you know, Fana's just just chilling. And she's like, yo, I have a friend of mine that's going to be coming in. And also, her friend writes songs, too. And I forgot what her friend's name was, but her friend is really, really dope at writing. She comes in, and when she came in, um, I had produced a full-on track, okay? A full-on track, and y'all are going to laugh at this. The beat that I made for Buddy like this was originally intended for Fauna. And so I remember I made it. I'm playing it. It is. The room is just like boom, boom. Like, you know what I'm saying? I made it for her. And then like she listened to it. And then her friend came in. And I remember Fauna was just like, you know, like vibing. She was like coming up with something. And then her friend comes in. She listens. And then she goes. This is cool. Let's 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 try something else. And it I was like, ah! I'm like, oh, like it, <laughs> it didn't hit. <laughs> it didn't hit. So that beat for Buddy, uh, like this, that was originally intended for Fauna. And I just remember after we like turned off the beat and I started working on a completely different track I knew she was not gonna sing on that song and so we end up proceeding with the session I was I was vibing you know it was fun it was still fun creating but I just remember it was just like dang it I made this really cold beat and it also made me kind of like get in my head about like did I did I not meet her where she was right like cuz I don't want to just be making beats just to make beats I know I can make beats but unless I'm making something that serves a purpose bro it's just like you know it, and it was and it was just nuts right and so I make another beat I leave the I leave the the spot and I think I hadn't talked to her at that time 2021 for like a year and so I ended up I didn't, I didn't get in contact with Fauna until like maybe a year later because she ended up dropping uh, Bad Bad like maybe six months later after that. Um, and she crushed it. That that release was nuts. And, and how everything turned out, she, she cracked the code with that. So shout out to Fauna. But I remember I left the session thinking like, you know, I, I made a really, really good idea. And I'm like... I want to like hold it for her just in case, but I don't think I don't think we're gonna re revisit it. And so, the exact like following day, I had another session with Buddy. I had never met Buddy in person, never had like talked to him one on one. I just knew they were like, "This is where his studio is. This is where you gotta go." And so I get up, I I get to this spot. This spot is probably. Um, Oh my gosh. I remember it was like this it was a house, okay? It was it felt like somebody's house. Like you 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 see the house, you see this garage and you just everything just looks like like brutalism from the 1970s. It's like futuristic and then like modern and like you got to go up these stairs in order to get to the studio cuz the studio is like on the very top floor. And so in my mind, I'm just like, "Yo, this is kind of fancy, you know? <laughs> um, and so I was just like, I was just like, man, like, you know, I, I, I'm sitting on some cool tracks and I had already did some sessions with Mick Jenkins and stuff. And so I had felt confident, you know what I'm saying? I felt confident, but like, you know, making that track and like, ah, I just, it didn't, it didn't connect. I was like, I hope this connects for somebody. And so 
I get up to the top floor and I open the door and immediately I see Buddy. He's rocking this like blue hoodie. He has these like black khakis on, some vans. And the first thing he says is he goes, he goes, um, hey man, what's your name? Uh, he's like, hey, I, I, uh, my name, he was like, my name's Kaylin, nice to meet you, da da da. And then also, too, I had my homie Rakim. Now, this is also another funny, funny part of the story. I had a buddy of mine driving me around to all these sessions, okay? I had my homie Rakim, shout out to Rakim. He drove me around LA to like every session. And so he came with me that day and we were, we went up there. Buddy is right there. He's at the front door. And the first thing he says is, Hey man, I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I, I've been in this room for the last like five hours. All I had was uh, two yerbas and four pieces of chicken. And I'm like, this finna be a fun session. And so, off rip, Yerba Mate, I was really introduced to Yerba from Buddy. Like, Kenny, Kenny Beats be talking about Yerba, but my first introduction to Yerba and its experience of what it can do, Buddy, okay? And so, Buddy was just like, I had mad Yerba, I had a couple pieces of chicken, and I, he barely slept. And so, um, we we get in the room. I got a chance to like talk to him for a little bit. His engineer is there too. I shook hands with him, and we all were like in the room, uh, just kind of like you know talking da da da. And he goes, "Yeah, just play some beats, play some beats." And so I start playing a bunch of stuff from like the uh, the Funk will Prevail before it came out. I played some stuff from Moments. I played just a bunch of stuff, and. Uh, something that like that he does is like whenever he listens to music, he'll like he'll have the microphone. He'll he'll uh, he'll, he'll he'll have the microphone. He'll like listen to a beat, and if it's like cool, if it's cool, he'll he'll like mumble over it with like a, a demo, and then he'll also have like someone recording over it. But he he's like someone who mumbles stuff, and the first thing that he like connects to or what feels like it's what he's trying to say is what he ends up using. Um, but we were going through a bunch of different beats. I mean, like, like, okay, 2021, I was, think about all those beats I was making throughout the pandemic and think about all the beats I was making back in 2021. I was playing him those. And he, he just, he was like, yeah, yeah, it's cool. But like, nah, 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 nah. And so I'm already feeling defeated from the, the previous session. And I thought, why don't I play this beat that I made for Fauna for him? Bruh, I turn this, I play the beat, he hears it, and he starts mumbling a little bit, and then the, the, the drums come in and, and hit. The drums come in and hit. When I, when I tell you, he said, keep playing this beat, and I mean tell you, uh, he, he said, keep playing this beat. I'm like, okay. I play it, he's mumbling, he's writing. I look at Rakim, Rakim looks at me and he's like, you think he likes his beat? And I was like, I think he likes his beat. <laughs> and so the beat that like Fauna turned down, buddies, he's in the zone, writing, writing, writing. This was three years ago. This, and, and just to give you con con some context of how much we played this beat, we started the session at like 1.30. Buddy is like, you know, writing. He's in it. He's in it. They're up. And, and in this studio, just to give you some context, in this studio, it's not just like a flat ground. There's an upstairs. And the upstairs is the booth and a drum room. So there's like a space where you can play drums. There's a booth. And inside of the booth is a bean bag sofa couch. Like a big one. Like think about it, like a big green sofa couch. Like y'all know those big ones that like fill up a massive space. And it's just like you can just plop it anywhere. You'd be like, oh yeah, I could fall asleep here. It's one of those. Buddy 
goes upstairs to the booth and me and Rock Hammer like, yo, this is crazy. Like he's like, I'm like, yo, buddy's about it. He's finna cut. He's finna cut over this thing, man. Like, yo, like I was just like, yo. The beat kept playing, but I didn't hear Buddy. And I'm like, what's going on? Like I, what? The beat kept playing, and so I was like, you know. Curiosity. The curiosity is killing me. I'm curious to see what he's doing up here. I go upstairs where the the thing is. Rub man fell asleep on that on that couch. <laughs> he was knocked out cold. He was asleep. It was like five o'clock, and we had just been playing this beat for like four hours straight. And, and and at this time, because like I don't know how collaboration works in LA, I was just like, man, don't nobody want my beats. Don't nobody want them, bro. Like, man, like my beats be putting folks to sleep. <laughs> I need to go back and work on my craft. And so it just dawned on me. It was like, and it dawned on me the first thing he said was that he drunk four pieces, he, he, he ate four pieces of chicken, drunk two yerbas, and barely slept. So brother man was exhausted. <laughs> and so, um, and I actually posted this on my story. Uh, let's see here. I, I posted this on my story years back. So let me see if I can find this picture real quick. Hold on. I'm gonna go ahead and find this real quick. Let's go to, I'm gonna try and see if I can airdrop this picture. Just to give you some context. Uh, Stories 2021. Yeah. Yeah, August 2021. That's perfect. So, and I'm gonna let my my Instagram kind of like rehash it basically um but yeah I, I he passed out he was knocked out cold for a minute and I just remember thinking like you know we've been sitting there for a minute and the, the beat and, and then the engineer just cut the beat off he was just like all right man you y'all want some food I was like yeah let's go grab some food so I don't think we left the room I think we just ordered some stuff as well uh, I think this same studio space was uh, sponsored by Yerba. So I saw a vending machine of Yerba cans just on the bottom floor. So I was like, is it cool if I get some Yerba? And they're like, yeah, sure. And I don't know what it was, but he fell asleep. And when he fell asleep, we drunk that Yerba. We drunk the Yerba. And some about time just went like, nine o'clock, nine o'clock. And so it's nine o'clock at night. Buddy was like knocked out cold and he woke up. And so when he woke up, he was like, play that beat one more time. And he laid down like this rough demo over the song. I'm gonna see if I can find this real quick. Cause now that I think about it, it's like, wow, the way this song happened, it happened in a day. So I'm going to find this real quick. Here we go. We're going to keep going. Skipping ahead. Skipping ahead. Ooh. It's August 9th. I'm going to try and like plug my phone in too so y'all can see it too. So let's see here. Keep going. And this was also a really, really gnarly month, too. I was cooked. This this was probably like the most hardest working, like, like month of music I'd ever had for my travels. So let me go to my utilities. See if I pull it up on my quick time. Where 
where's quick time and a pq quick time player yep there we go new movie recording i'm gonna share this screen yeah there we go all right so Let me also see if I can turn on the phone as a speaker. Turn that off right here. Yeah, this was a crazy session, too. I got a chance to do a session with Gallant. That was nuts, too. And so let me see if I can zoom ahead here to uh, Buddy. Shout out to Rakim. That joint I did with uh, Alexander Lewis. Jesse Boykins, too. It was such a crazy, like, Lido got a chance to link it with him, Channel Tress. Toby, and it is the craziest thing, bro. This is the craziest thing, bro. We were like, I was just dropping it. Okay, so this is it. This is it. Okay, so remember how I told y'all there was that Yerba can? There was a, that Yerba, like, dispenser? Like, look at the, look at the, okay, look at, just look at what's in the middle of the screen. A whole yerba can dispenser that this was a dope space bro and so they had nothing but just yerba in it and i also think this was um rufio shout out to rufio rufio's spot was this is where he was like like creating out of but um so zoom ahead so peep this look at this this is precisely three years ago let me go ahead. Gladly. And so. Okay, so remind you this. Remember I told you he fell asleep? This brother woke up. <laughs> He woke up and popped down. It was like, yo, play that beat. And he played it. I was like, yo. And I realized like, yo, this brother's cool, man. This brother is cool. Like, and it just, it just reminded me of like, it, it made me feel like, I was like, yo, he reminded me of like a family member, bro. He reminded me of somebody like I, I know. And so it was just funny to see He's like, you know, fell asleep. He fell asleep and then woke up and was just like, run it. <laughs> and, and like he's he's on a he's on a thing like this, bro. He's on he's on a staircase, bro. He's just on a staircase like that. And I realized I was like, yeah, I'ma see this guy again. And um Yeah. Shout out shout out to Buddy, bro. Shout out, to, shout out to Buddy, man. It was really, really dope to, you know, create that record. And if y'all are down, I'll break that that thing down of what's in it. Because a lot of those sounds of what I made in that that uh, that uh record were very, very simple. It was a very, very simple record that I, I really put together. Um, and so, yeah, shout out to Buddy. Um, and then, oh, here's, here's, the, here's the craziest part, right? So I'm going to go back and find the, the videos one more time. So... Someone I did not know had become part of the record was uh, Laven Kali and Yam Greer. Shout out to those two incredible artists, incredible songwriters, vocalists, the dopest, the dopest people ever. When the song drops, I see on the credits, Laven Kali is listed as a vocal. And then yeah. <laughs> and then Yam Greer is also listed as a vocalist too. And I'm like, yo, so they're on the song too. And I'm like, dang it, it makes so much sense. And I ended up texting Laven. And uh Laven was like, yo, bro, like, that's so crazy. I didn't know. Like, he was like, when I found out I was Unimated, that was cool. So our first official like collab that dropped was that. You know what I'm saying? Like, so shout out to Buddy for bringing everybody the dopest, the dopest of the dope together. And uh, 
without further ado, I guess I'll uh, I'll break that record down for you guys right now. And I'll go ahead and copy this real quick so we can get into it. And I'll show y'all right here. And actually called it was originally called the Dwelling. <laughs> dwelling with Fauna Hughes. That was the original name for this beat. Uh, dwelling with Fauna Hughes. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and open this up right here. Just gonna copy this, open it up. Uh, boom. Don't save. Here we go. Yeah, so let me go ahead and do something real quick. Um, so if you can hear my voice through this this thing right now, I actually have a couple things I got to add to this. This is before a lot of my sound packs got, um, you know, cleaned up and I got a chance to like really, really drop it. S2 was good. Uh, so what we got here is this weird synth that I, I loved using this weird synth patch during 2021. Um, this rig right here, like watch, I did, I rapidly did my whip, I dropped it to my... And this was it. This was literally the whole beat. And y'all recognize the drum beat because it was my first time using Kick Sculptor. I chopped up a bunch of different loops to be able to get this sound. Now here's the cool part. The chords that you guys are hearing. One of the things that I love doing is like, I love having like musicianship break moments. So pretty much similar, like, 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 uh, uh, someone that you cool with, uh, cool with, um, with, uh, uh, merges, shout out to merges. Uh, that kind of like flow this right here is, it was one of those things that I love doing. This is all addictive keys, by the way. So that preset, I'll even show y'all what the preset is. Uh, it's lounge. I have a preset called lounge Kalen. It's actually something that I made custom. Um, and then I think as well, I used the exact same preset, but decided to have a pitch bend on uh, the tax. So this is what the set, this one sounds like. And then when you layer it together, that's this is what it sounds like. And so, yeah, that's basically a good portion of it. And then um, uh, I had this like really cool breakdown that I actually made with him in the room. So uh, shout out to Fonda Hughes for, you know, having that like that thing where I could like create that kind of bridge. Cause if, it, if, if I didn't do that with her, this, none of this would have happened. So um, I also had like a piano that I realized never was a part of the actual song. Now here's the cool part, the bass line, the bass line comes from uh, this one shot stab that I have uh, in, I want to say, I want to say my earlier volume packs, um, I'm gonna go and find it real quick. I think it's in the volume two. I have a one shot, uh, pack for just bass notes and stuff. Ah, volume four. So volume four has it. And if you can see, it says E stab two It's just basically one long note from my bass, my actual like string bass that I have in the studio. And um, yeah, I use I literally was using it for everything at that time. And so yeah, that's it's part of volume four, my sound packs. Uh, and then yeah, you hear everything else is just having really cool musicianship, and then it has that triangle at the top. <laughs> Now 
I, this is where the cool part comes in. I wanted to make a turnaround so bad in this track. I wanted to make a turnaround so bad. And I realized, like, you know, a lot of joints don't have turnarounds. And so I was like, why not put a turnaround in the track? And I remember every time we kept playing it with Buddy, Buddy had no idea what to do. He had no idea. He was like, yo, I'm... Uh, he was like, should we take it out? And I'm like, we can. We can take it out. But I remember thinking like, dang it, like, let's not take it out. You know what I'm saying? Because he wanted to say some more stuff, but it made me realize like he said everything that was like perfect at the time. And then this breakdown would come in. So it's going to follow right after here. And as well, I got one really unique effect here. My 07 laser. Yeah, and so that was pretty much how the track turned out. And then I'll even break down the drums. Uh, let me mute all this real quick. So, uh, yeah, keep that going. Actually, keep the bass going. Keep the bass going. Yeah. So what we got right here for the drums. Now, mind you, this was also like several years back. I have an old one shot that I had created. It was actually when I was working on the sauce pack. This is when I started working on the sauce pack. So this rim, let me see if I can show it in my browser. This was a, a old rim shot that like I had used from uh, one of my one of my favorite packs at the time. And so um, beat Bucha, Pure Protein, Volume Four. I had used that pack to be able to make that uh, drum break. And so the most that I did to this was having drum bus. But what you guys are hearing is a combination of these, these hi-hats. And so these hi-hats, hilariously enough, Hilariously enough, these hi hats, <clears throat> these hi hats uh, were the same hi hats I used for White Walls. If you guys know what White Walls is, it's one of the records I did from um, from Lupe. Hilariously enough, everything goes back to Lupe. Uh, White Walls from Moments, and so this is the same hi hat. I had a, a, a Afrobeat Tom that I use by AED. And I had like this really unique percussion element here by Skillionaire. And then this is where the finishing touch came in. I was like, and at this time, I started working more on like creating my own sounds from scratch. And so I made the first like, like first like, you know, versions of Kick Sculptor from my drum sculptor, uh, Ableton Live Rack. If you ever get curious about that, definitely cop that. Um, but yeah, this, this, the kick drum is all synthesis. It's all synthesis. And the fun part about this is you can like customize the sounds. Uh, for a collab like this, do you ultimately stem out the track and let someone else mix and master from there? Or do you collab on the final touches? Honestly, it really depends on the relationship you have with the person. Cause I know when, when buddy like was working on this, we had about like four different versions of this that sat for maybe a year and a half until we revisited again. And so I remember he kept saying, he was like, yo, we're going to drop this as a single. And I was like, okay, cool. But then like, there were so many different like adjustments that were being made. And he was like, I really don't know what to do for this, this breakdown part. You know what I'm saying? He didn't, and, and he really didn't know what to do. So the, the beat would sit with this open for a minute. And, um, I'm just very curious to know what that conversation was. It was like, yo, you should just have someone sing over it. You know what I'm saying? And it, it was it was really dope to hear Laven and Yam go crazy on, on that, like, turnaround. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much the beat. But what was so cool about this collab, it was like, the moment I played it for him, it was like, we, me and, me and Buddy, like, kind of, like, understood what we were going for. And um, I'm just very thankful to be 
someone who produced that record. It could have been anybody, but hey, I was I was chosen to do to to do it. So to anybody that peeps game on it, um, definitely definitely listen to uh, like this, my buddy. And then let me add one more thing too. So you guys are currently hearing this like vintage reverb on my voice, right? So I had the original master bus from the template. I have a Ableton Live template that has all of like the acid effects, KFX racks, anything that you think I use, I am selling it in that template. Um, and so what is sitting in this template uh, is, you know, of course, utility. I got the EQ3. EQ3 is making uh, everything you hear a little bit more punchier. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I have a glue compressor that kind of like turns it up a little bit. But aside from that, I put RC20 on the master bus of this record. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But what's funny is the the uh, piano wasn't on here. Yeah, so the RC20 was on the master bus for this beat. Um, so if anybody's curious to know why that texture sounds the way it does, it's because RC20 is on the master bus. And uh, yeah, that's, that's that. Joe Tita, I'll definitely break that down too. I'll definitely break down uh, the joint for Eric too. I'll probably do it on Thursday. Probably do it on Thursday. So, um, yeah. 